Hi there, I'm John from cncr.com and we're, today we're going to 3D print Medieval Castle Walls B. Now this is actually a model that I did about 12 years ago with my 3D Systems Cube and it was about a quarter the size because the bed was a lot smaller back then. And since then I haven't really done much 3D printing at all. I sort of walked away from, not the industry, but I walked away from the process for quite a long time uh, just because I was disillusioned with the limitations that it had. My idea when I first got into 3D printing was I was running a toy design company back then and I was making a bunch of wooden toys and my idea was, hey, why don't we make 3D printed version of all those toys? Now that would mean you'd have different colors, uh, you can have total customizability of that. And the 3D printer back then that can do that was like 30 or 40 grand. And the 3D printer I have now is just a couple hundred bucks to do this. Now the bad thing about 3D printing is it takes a very long time to do, but in the last 10 years it's been a tremendous increase in speed. Uh, even the printer I have now, this took 19 hours to do. The other 3D printer, I don't, I think it, it just wouldn't be possible at the size to begin with. But the other limitation of the other 3D printer that I had was that at the bottom here, things would start to come off after a little bit of time. This 3D printer has a heated bed which means that this is solid, like this has been on there for 19 hours and it's not coming off, I'm going to have to rip it off, which I'll do now. And there you have the support material. And you could just look at the base of it. Like look at this, this looks absolutely astonishing to me. And this is PLA, so it's nothing special. You can see all the details. As mentioned before, I actually designed this model 12 years ago and it was for my 3D Systems Cube, which actually did it, which you'll see shortly. Now this is the Ender 3. It's definitely not a new machine. It came out in 2018, but I just got it a couple weeks ago and I've been playing around with it and optimizing the settings. And I'm really blown away by the quality of the print compared to my 3D Systems Cube. Now it might seem obvious, only 12 years difference, but the 3D printing world has advanced incomparably uh, from then to now. The print of the, the speed of the print is tremendous compared to what I had before. I remember with my 3D Systems Cube, you'd actually hear every step, you'd actually hear that as the model or as the head of the 3D printer would move around. And I also remember very distinctly the sound of broken models because what would happen is you have a glass uh, platform and you'd have like a glue stick. And on that glue stick, you'd have about a couple minutes. So you, you'd put the glue stick on the glass and then within a couple minutes, if you didn't start 3D printing, that stuff dried out and there's no way it was gonna adhere to it. Uh, of course, the resolution of the filament was, there's no comparison. Uh, you'd see every line compared to this, which is almost seamless. Uh, to an uneducated eye, meaning a person who's never seen a 3D model or a 3D print, this looks amazing. And to what I've seen before, I could always see the defects in it just because that's the industry I'm in with the CNC machines. So this model, I didn't make any other design changes to it. It's exactly the same STL. I just did a fresh export, of course, from the 3D Studio Max uh, for the Ender. And I made it a little bit larger as well just because I could. Uh, the limitation with the three systems cube was definitely the platform size. And it wasn't really the size too much as the longer you printed, the, long, the, the higher the chance of the print not working because something would break. Now, it could be literally anything, ungluing, um, you have the spaghettification of stuff and it, it was just a mess sometimes. But back then, it was really, really an amazing 3D printer. So it's not a fair comparison to compare 12 years ago 3D printing to today. Now just for comparison, let's take a look at a video that I made over 10 years ago of me 3D printing this with my 3D Systems Cube. Just so you can see the difference almost immediately as to the fill of it and also the overall process. So here you can see the 3D printing uh, happening. It's definitely not real time. I don't remember the build time on this. I probably have it somewhere. Uh, it's definitely overnight. Uh, most of the time when I would 3D print something like this here, it would take you know a day and a half to three or four days. It, it was crazy. But 
that's the way the technology was back then. You don't have uh, any AI, you don't have any of the modern conveniences you have today. That being said, it's actually impressive what I was able to do. And if you look really closely at the model, when, I'm, when I have the static pictures on it, when I'm comparing the two models, you'll notice that the archways were actually better 12 years ago with the 3D Systems Cube than they are with the Ender 3 nowadays. For some reason, I guess the filament was thicker and it was not stronger, but it had more strength to it. If, so it was able to go over gaps and it wouldn't actually cause any problems. While nowadays it's so thin and thin that there's not much strength to the PLA. And therefore, if there's a small gap, it just droops right down into it. So again, some things are better than back then than there are now, but overall 3D printing has advanced tremendously. Now this was version two. Uh, version three of this model, I have a whole bunch of other ideas and they all just came back to my memory after I 3D printed this one with the Ender. Now overall, the 3D Systems Cube was actually a really, really good 3D printer uh, for what it did. And I did a ton of printing with it. Uh, I'd say my success rate was around 75%. Uh, the other 25% would either happen right at the beginning of the 3D printing or right at the end. You know, like you have an hour left and then the print would stop working for whatever reason. And that was sort of what disillusioned me about 3D printing for so long. I got tired of it because you'd always have to sort of babysit it. And it could be, literally anything could happen. It would never tell you what the problem was. Um, but generally it was just trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. And although the 75% success rate might sound nice, uh, when you're you know two days into a print, that's two days gone. And again, that's just, that was just frustrating to me. And I know quite a few other people who got into 3D printing and that that's just the frustration that all, I guess, people who do 3D printing can experience. And if you have too many of them with the machine, you literally want to throw that machine out. I no longer have that model. I looked everywhere for it. I just can't find it anywhere. Um, what I'm guessing happened is a couple of years ago, I want to clean up the shop and I threw the 3D printer and all those models that I made with it. because so I thought I'd never get back into 3D printing and well, Fate had other plans for me. So let's take a closer look at this model here because it's based on a tariff. Because what I, what I was doing back then was I didn't know the limitations and that kind of stuff of the 3D printer. You gotta remember, you didn't really have YouTube for too many things. You, you're basically working in a void whenever it came to design. So my idea was, this is the second version. The first one was a simpler one with a lot less detail. And once the 3D printer was able to do that, I made a model B, which is what this one is, with a lot more detail. And then I would 3D print it and see how the details came out. And then I make another one, another one, another one until I had the model that just looked awesome and that worked 100% of the time. Now, if you take a look at this very closely, I'll show pictures of the 3D Systems Cube model throughout this comparison video as well, because I took a lot of pictures of that. But right off the bat, you can, sell, you can see how seamless the layers are. Of course, you can see them here. There's something that happened uh, when it was 3D printing. But with the 3D system scoop, you could clearly see every line. And I think the resolution was a lot less than what this is. Uh, this is point, uh, so 0 0.02 millimeters per layer. And it came out really, really nice. I'm really impressed by it. Now, something that the cube also showed was the arch. You can see I have a little bit too much of a flat area here. And therefore, you have delamination here. And you can see a bit of a drop here. In every one of these arches, you can see that. So that's an easy fix to 3D model and improve upon. This here was a great idea I had. Let me put it upside down so it's easier to see. So you can see here, having a slow, slow flow of material really adds a lot of strength to the overall model, but also prevents this drop from happening as well. Now, for this model here, uh, the next thing I wanna do again, I'm going back to my memory 10 years ago, was that I wanted to have internal walkways all the way around. Because the nice thing about 3D printing, unlike any other, shop, any other tool I have here in the shop, is that uh, complexity is free. Now, I heard that from Kathy Lewis at 3D Systems when I went there. I spent a day there, uh, you know, seeing all the 3D printing stuff. Because again, that stuff wasn't really out there that much back then. Um, you had to actually go visit the company. So I spent a day at 3D Systems in Rock Hill 
and I saw amazing stuff. Like it, it was mind blowing the th what the three D printers there could do. Uh, the cost was mind blowing as well at the time. And to be honest with you, this model here looks better than what that thirty or forty thousand dollar model could do ten uh, t years ago. It's astonishing. Now the next level up, of course, is color. Because again, I, back then I ran, you know, I sold CNC files for people with lasers, routers, all that kind of stuff. And I was getting into the 3D printing end of things as well. But I wanted multicolor prints. And the only machine that could do that, again, was like a $30,000 or $40,000 machine. And this is better. Like, this is light years ahead of it. And so I look forward to being able to have multiple colors on models very, very soon. So the next step for this here is now I know this works. I just have to improve the design on this here. Um, I'm going to add a lot more detail to make it more sort of castle-ish. I also want to have a walkway going outside. So basically all these inside parts here, you can actually have a little stairs going all the way up here, have little ramparts on the top. There's a ton of detail I could add to this and that's the next step. So that'll be Medieval Castle Walls C. So looking for custom modeling, contact me at cncara.com. I'll make it for you and ship it right to your door as a physical model.